Right now I'm standing on what used to be the runway of the first airfield in Japan. Obviously a lot has changed since an aircraft took off from here for the first time in 1911 and now the runway serves as part of the Tokorozawa Aviation Memorial Park and there is also a Tokorozawa Aviation Museum behind me. Over the next few minutes I'll tell you more about both so keep watching. Before continuing though, subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos and if you like this video please don't forget to hit like at the end of it. Now let's get started. If you're arriving by train, which is by far the easiest way to get here, you will be welcomed by an aircraft before you even step into the park or the museum. In fact, chances are that the YS-11 displayed in front of the Kokukuen station will be the highlight of the trip for you. The YS-11, which was manufactured by NAMC between 1962 and 1974, was Japan's only post-war airliner until the Mitsubishi Regional Jet was launched. The airframe on display was manufactured in 1969 and it operated domestic flights for Air Nippon until 1997. Generally the aircraft can only be seen from the outside, but every now and then the museum organizes events to let people see its cabin and cockpit. The Tokorozawa Aviation Memorial Park itself is quite large, it's about one kilometer from one end to the other, and as mentioned in the introduction, it also encompasses what used to be the runway of the first airfield in Japan that opened in 1911. And with a lot of green spaces, it's a great place to spend some time at, either by yourself, with your dogs, or with your family. There's also plenty of vending machines and other facilities like toilets and even play sets so you don't have to worry about going thirsty or having your kids get bored after a while. Besides all that, there are also statues, monuments and so on that remind visitors of the fact that they are in a cradle of Japanese aviation. I'm standing in front of the most noteworthy of those, which is a memorial built as a reminder of Japan's first deadly air crash. The crash took place in 1913 in Tokorozawa, not far from the park, and killed two Imperial Army pilots that were on board, Kimura Suzushiro and Tokuda Kinichi, after their aircraft's left wing broke. Anyways, that's it for the park, and now let's go to the museum. Actually, before we go into the museum, there's one more aircraft on display outside, a Curtis C-46 that used to be operated by the Japan Self-Air Defense Force. The C-46 was manufactured between 1940 and 1945, and more than 3,000 airframes of the type were built. Besides being used as a military transport aircraft with a variety of air forces, the aircraft type also served as an airliner with a number of airlines, including the legendary Pan Am. Now let's really go to the museum. <laughs> It costs 510 yen for adults and 100 yen for elementary and junior high school children to enter the museum and the tickets can be bought right at the entrance. The museum is open from 9.30 a.m. until 5 p.m. every day except for Mondays and the New Year holidays. You can find the detailed calendar of the days the museums open on its website, I'll be linking to it down below. The one thing you want to be sure about is that you're not going on the days marked on the calendar with the following characters. There's about a dozen aircraft inside the museum, while most of them are on the first floor, there is also some hanging from the ceiling. Luckily, most of the aircraft feature bilingual Japanese and English descriptions and so you can learn about them even without being able to read Japanese. Just to mention a few aircraft that are on display in the museum, there is a T-6 trainer aircraft, an H-21 tandem rotor helicopter, which is also nicknamed the Flying Banana, and an L-21 trainer. While most of the aircraft you can only see from the outside, some like this Cessna you can also enter and see its cockpit and so on. Besides the actual aircraft, there are also four exhibits which give visitors more details about the physics of flight as well as the history of aviation. In these exhibits you can learn about the history of aviation all the way from birds through hot air balloons to fixed wing airplanes. There are simple experiments demonstrating basic aspects of flight, such as lift, and there are even workshops for children to learn more about aircraft. My favorite exhibit in this part of the museum was a scale that showed how many balloons are needed for a person to be able to fly. As for the history of aviation, there was a mock-up of the Wright Brothers workshop, where a movie about the very beginnings of flight was shown. There was also a panel showing some of the early pioneers of flight. Besides the world history of aviation, there were also exhibits dedicated to its Japanese part. Unfortunately, most of the descriptions were only in Japanese. The last thing worth mentioning about the first floor is its small space exploration exhibition, where the most interesting part was a machine that was supposed to simulate lower gravity. While I'm not sure how well it managed to do that, it was certainly fun to try. On the second floor, there were more exhibits about the history of aviation in Japan, including some panels, as well as memorabilia, such as flight goggles, helmets, and so on. There was also a section dedicated to air traffic control, where people could learn more about this important part of aviation. Finally, there were some machines with aviation-related quizzes. In the museum, there weren't many airline-related exhibits except for a part of an A320 tail and the number of YS-11 components. Besides all that, there was also a little play area for kids and a corner where they could try on airline uniforms. Outside the museum's entrance, there was also a museum shop and a cafe. 
Before ending this video, let's take a look at how to get to the museum and park. As mentioned in the introduction, by far the easiest way to get there is using the train. The park and the museum are served by Kokuko and Station, which in Japanese means Aviation Park Station, which is on the Seibu Shinjuku line. You can get there easily from Shinjuku and other parts of Tokyo in about 30 to 60 minutes, so it makes for a great day trip destination. The museum and the park are about a 5 minute walk from the station's east exit. Okay, that's it for today. I hope you will consider visiting Tokorozawa Aviation Memorial Park and Tokorozawa Aviation Museum next time you are in Japan. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.